the markets, I think, are trying to figure out. Let's broaden the conversation on that note with Truist Keith Lerner, Requisites Bryn Talkington, also a member of the Halftime Investment Committee. It's nice to have everybody with us. Keith, you think this is a little overdone at this point? I mean, I hear you. A lot of stocks appear oversold. That'll get you a ham sandwich and a bag of chips. You know, great to be with you, Scott. Um, listen, we've been saying our message this year is um, reduce risk, go more up in quality, be a bit more defensive. But on a short-term perspective, you know, I do think things are getting a little bit one-sided. Um, we are on a downward trend, but I think I think the risk reward, at least short-term, is somewhat improving. You know, one metric we look at, Scott, is just saying, what's the percent of stocks above the 50-day moving average right now? That's two percent. Uh, we look back since 1990. We've only seen that happen nine other times. And historically, when you get that oversold, when you look at, let's say, three, six months later, and especially a year later, markets tend to rebound. Sometimes there is a further overshoot. But what we're saying is any further overshoot from this standpoint, we think will we'll, we'll recapture on that rebound. But that is in a context of a very choppy market. And again, we're not saying to be aggressive here. We're just saying at this point, this is not a place where we would be recommending reducing equities, especially the, maybe the last point, Scott, is you know, we're down about 23 percent. The median decline around the recession is 24, so you're basic, basically baking that in. The average is around 29 percent. Of course, we could go more than that. But markets don't move in a straight line up, and they don't move in a straight line down. So, again, I would be hesitant to be pressing shorts or becoming more aggressive selling at these levels, given how oversold and how one-sided sentiment has become. So, Bryn, the, the words I wrote at the top of the show today, relentless reset of your stocks, your money, and your expectations. You heard what Jim Labenthal said, um, a member of the investment committee like you. Uh, it doesn't appear as though he has fully reset uh, his stocks, his money, his expectations for where we go here. Is, is that correct? Should he? Does it mesh with your view? Well, I mean, Jim has a discrete basket of names, right? And so you have to, that, that's so important. He's not buying the broad market. He's buying these discrete ba basket of names. So, so, so he could actually be wrong on the economy, but be right on his names because he has high quality names. As an asset allocator, when I'm looking at the whole portfolio of asset allocating, to me, it's like the, the trade has to, been, to be defensive all year. What I think the markets in this conundrum, and you and Jim were talking about jobs, is that the Fed actually wants unemployment to go higher. And so the Fed is like pressing on that. They're tightening financial conditions. And so they're, they're, they're actually wanting the consumer to get weaker because that's what happens when you raise rates and, which has never happened, at the same time, you're actually reducing the balance sheet. And so this really strong financial tightening that's now starting to happen globally I think we're in these uncharted waters. And so as, a, as an asset allocator, you know, we have, I've, I've talked about a lot of cover call strategies. Um, on the bond side, we have ultra short, we have no duration, because we do want to stay invested though, right? Because if you just sit on the sidelines and to your point, what signals and wait for the signals, the signal's gonna be when nobody wants to buy. Right. When Mark Haynes at the bottom, you know, in 2009, there was no positive signals. It was terrible out there. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's the signals when it gets really bad. And so I don't think actually it's that bad yet. It's felt really orderly and just like this daily grind. And I still when I look at multiples, whether it's the Nasdaq or the S&P, we're really just fair value. And to me, when you go into uncharted waters with what the Fed as well as the other global central banks are doing, I think multiples need to be undervalued mm. in order to get a good bottom.